the 5th of May 2019, uh, last year. So I'm just now brand new. But I have experience in his office before I come the president, uh, chairman, I was actually learn a lot from his side. So congregation for well done what you have done for me and for our community. Our new community, with our new community, would like to acknowledge the South Sudanese leaders and sub-community leaders, Africa, uh, friend to our community in Victoria. With us today, the following leader and the guests, I would like to thank you actually for coming tonight for our new community. Uh, we are we are people like uh, uh, Stanley mentioned before. We live in peace and unity. All the South Sudanese together, we are our family. And sorry, brother, sister, I forget we have a new community. Uh, Mr. George, he uh, didn't mention before he was here tonight here. Uh, thank you, George. And um, yeah, and that is uh, why we are here. And you are, you know, what we call it, we are, you know, we are sharing. How to share this the name they're giving uh, from our, uh, when we created, when God created us actually. Call and you are something we can share. Uh, as a people together, that's our name. So we would like to thank you all for your coming and that actually I uh, enjoy your night and we will see more later on. And I will not say much actually, also I would like to thank my um, two mothers, uh, Con and Nawili, uh, around here. This also, and uh, help us the woman community are the one with us. Uh, thank you very much and I will end to here. Thank you. First of all, I wanted to say that earlier, uh, when Stanley gave a speech, we actually forgot something very important, which is we did not fuck. That's not really good, is it? So what we're going to do now, we're not going to fuck. We're just going to wait until I give all the gifts, and then we're going to give uh, a thanks in a way that I'm going to show you. First, in my hand, this is the first gift. This is our culture symbol. It's called a one. This is our first gift to Stanley. A tarbuk to those who don't know, it's actually uh, a new traditional beer. Yeah. So this is our second gift. And this is um, <clears throat> This award is for all the work that Mr. Stanley has done in our community. It's uh, an award or uh, a certificate, if you like, of appreciation because we really, really do appreciate him. Um, just sorry, I forgot there's a couple of uh, elder ladies that do not understand English and we've been going on in English, so I apologize and I have to apologize to them. And a boy, um, the women that are doing the English and the men that are doing the English, they are award. Chairman Mara Mara Ninge, Stenel Awal. So, for the people that are doing the English, they are doing the English, they the English, they are doing 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 the English, they uh, let Stanley go and sit down. This is what we're going to do. We're going to say thank you to him in this way, the way I'm going to demonstrate. And after I finish, then you can follow me. This is how we're going to do it. We're calling him, you know, good looking, you know, good looking, you know, good looking. Exactly in that language, it means uh, God will bless you three times. So one, two, three. You know, good looking, you know, good looking, you know, good looking. You know, good looking. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you, as well as everybody else, to the former chairperson, Mr. Estaniel Owo. Um, I can tell that your community members really appreciate the time that you've put into their community, and I'm very happy that they gave you a very welcoming, um, actually, not very welcoming, a farewell that you can um, remember for for your time i'd also like to congratulate the new the new office under gora odia i want to thank you for this wonderful invitation that i've received to come here today 
Um, I'd also like to say hello to everybody. Uh, it's my first time to attend an annual community uh, event and I am very appreciative of this uh, handout that you've given out to me today. Um, all I want to say is that I, first of all, I'll introduce myself properly for those of you who don't know me. Uh, my name is Achol Majok Muriel. I live in the Winter, in Windham Bell in the West and I work at the Victorian Government Solicitor's Office as a legal intern. I'm studying law at the moment and I chair the South Sudanese Community Association in Victoria. Um, my message that I bring here today is a message of uh, peace and unity. Um, my background is from DICA and um, I, I can tell that over the years uh, our leaders from different communities have worked very hard to associate and engage with one another and to, to bring us uh, all together. I would encourage our community members to um, support the initiative of unity between all of our communities so that we can be strengthened as South Sudanese and um, speak with, with one voice and act with, uh, with one vision. Um, I know that there's been so many um, issues that have happened regarding our young people and our mothers and um, it's almost like we don't really know of one another very well. Uh, in a way, I'm disappointed that this is the first time that I can stand amongst the Anua community, but at the same time, I'm very happy because it's, um, it's better late than never, if, if I can say. At the same time, uh, Australia is a very wonderful country. I, I feel we are so blessed to be here. You know, we could be in other places in the world where we can suffer. So maybe we can add a little bit more appreciation for the resources that are available and um, just, just, just be happy and try to live our life in a, in a more comfortable, uh, in a more comfortable way. I know we're dealing with so many challenges at the moment, but um, waking up with gratitude and having a positive mindset can really change your outcome. So please take the opportunities that are offered to you and um, reach out to community members. Um, from now on, if there's anything exciting happening in the West, I am going to invite a new community and I hope that you will tag along so that we can continue this progress and continue this journey of unity. One more thing I'll mention, um, please, my people, let's not depend on the unity of South Sudan to bring us together. Um, if we're going to wait for our leaders back home to be united, for us to be united, we could be waiting for a very long time. So us here in Diaspora, we can start that journey and strengthen that, uh, that unity and then hopefully create change back home. Imagine if all the voices in Diaspora came together and um, worked together and activated for a better outcome for our people back home. We could change the structure and we could also influence them to, to be on that journey. So I am giving you a welcoming hand. I, I see you all as my people and um, I'm very glad to, to be a part of you. From today onwards, I will represent myself as an Anyua community member. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Good evening everybody. Good evening. It's always good when you say good evening and many people respond. Anyway, I won't take much of your time. Who, firstly, I have to thank uh, Brother Gora for inviting Rebecca and myself to come to this important meeting where you are actually being uh, made the chairman of the Anua community. And I also have to thank the ladies like Mama Awili, who I have known for so many years. I regard her as my own mother and everyone else in the, in the room um, tonight. Um, Rebecca Orient is the director of ADRA, Victoria and Tasmania. For those people who don't know what ADRA is, it's a, a charity arm of Seventh-day Adventist and they are called Adventist Development Relief Agency. What this organization do is to work with people who are facing problems, calamities. 
We all know that as African people, we are facing a lot of problems here in Australia. Not by, joy, not by choice, but it's the situations that are happening. So ADRA partnered with Afri Oz Care under SETO Assist to access African communities for help. And we have been working closely together since 2017. For all the leaders here in Victoria from South Sudan and also church leaders, I won't even mention the names because there are many, you know Rebecca very well and the work we are doing in the community. Now, coming to my speech, which I'll talk a little bit about ADRA as well. As a migrant, I came to Australia in 1998 with a husband. Everything was good, and I was thinking, oh, going to Australia, it will be a land of milk and honey. I thought maybe money was, people could just get money easily from trees. But reality was not the truth because I was trimmed to zero. In my country, I used to work as a second lady cartographer, but coming here ended up to be a cleaner in a hotel. I didn't know English at all. It was so hard to put one word together, but with time, I learned. But along that time, there were problems that started happening in families, in my family, which a lot of people here, African people, you can understand that people are going through a lot of problems. We do carry unresolved trauma from the countries of origin. For me, the unresolved trauma actually happened here in Australia, whereby I had to work hard in order to earn a living. Misunderstandings happened along the way in our little family to the point that I lost my mind. Losing my mind, the Sudanese people, they call it Majnun. It was really hard. Not that it was by choice, but because there were so many things happening. I had a daughter who was growing up in intergenerational conflict. The husband who could not even understand what depression was, and there was one problem one after another. I want to read out the things, the experiences that I've gone through, and I want you to reflect the people in the community, what they are going through. You see that it's the same. I don't come from South Sudan, but the experiences that I have, I, I have faced in my life, similar to what the women are going through, and also similar to what the children are going through. So, as I said before, I lived a life with limited English, I lost a baby, seven months. How many families have lost the children here? The Sudanese people, a lot. I do go to Sudanese funerals. Each time I'm there, Deacon George know very well. I'm always in tears because it remembers of my daughter that I lost. Sad thing is, she's buried in Springville. Most of the times, Sudanese people are buried in Springville. What does that bring? Pain. At age 50, I got divorced about seven years ago, I think 2014. The man left for a younger woman in my country. Does that make, is it the same, the Sudanese people, men here? I'm warning you, don't leave women to go and marry in Sudan. Please look after the women here. Because they suffer, I suffered myself. Because of all these problems, and growing up with a daughter who was a teenager, I suffered major depression, and also after the passing of my daughter. The major depression required psychiatric treatment. At the point, the psychiatric doctor who was treating me told my ex-husband that pack up your things and go back to Africa because this woman will never get any better and I was heavily medicated. But it was through faith, through believing in Jesus Christ and the people who surrounded me, I got better. After I got better, 
as you know, as African people, mental illness is a taboo. We don't talk about it. I thought, well, I have to know more about mental illness. So I started nursing. I passed really well, even though I, I was recovering from depression. I went to Melbourne University and qualified as a mental health clinician. As a clinician, it helped me to go in jails, different hospitals, anywhere in the metropolitan, I'm well known in psychiatric wards. What did I see? Isolated African children. The history, mom is living by herself, dad left us. Family violence, shouting in the house in front of children, and then the kids get psychologically damaged. Back home, we used to smack our children. Here, we cannot smack them. I tell you what, if you smack a child, the pain will go away. But if you continuously putting down that child, calling them names, psychological pain is what is driving our children to the Lord. Road. They feel pain, they suffer from depression, they cannot tell anyone, they tend to friends on the street, they start taking drugs, police come, and then the jails. With this, I thought, well, I need to do something when I recovered. My story is very long, I can take the whole night. When I recovered with the help of ADRA, Seventh-day Adventist, they connected me with Adran. That's why we started working together. But initially, it was money from the pocket and well wishes that we opened up Rose Care. Then 2017, Adra joined us. Since then, we have been working in courts. There are people here who know very well the job we do. Working in prisons, working, in, in, working with the families, trying to get those young kids together. The results have been good. Most of the young people we have been looking after, now they are working. Some have got their own families. And even the young, young, young people, they are now getting very well with their parents. So we established basketball. It's called Black Rhinos. The reason is to get the youth together so that we can understand exactly what is going on in their mind. So with the assistance of other organizations and also the governments, both the federal and um, labor, we have been given grants. We have been able to employ people so that we can help the young people well. But being a mother myself, I know we can help youth. But if you help that child, they go back home, the same problems are, the, the, problems are the same. Now we are working with mothers. The problem is we have isolated mothers in our homes. They don't have jobs. They can't work because they don't have experience. Some, they are still struggling to speak English like the way I used to. So we have established a group. We are working with mothers. We did put about 15 people for interview, 10 passed, and five have got jobs. This is last month only. About young people, I think over 50, we have been helping them with employment. Why am I saying this? If you don't have money, definitely your mind will not work. So I'm speaking to us here in the audience. Those people who have got companies, please lobby so that we can help people to have employment, even the mamas. They need financial help. They also need psychological help. And if you feel like you are having pain in your mind, in African language we say, heavy in the chest. At night you are constantly waking up. It's a sign of depression. Your heart beating very fast. It's a sign of anxiety. Please reach out for help. And the community, we should stop labeling others. When someone has depression, you talk about them. If you see another child in a prison or another child at court, you talk about them. Let's come together, help one another so that we can live well. The kids who are on the street, I'm telling you, if you give them more attention, they will come back home. Do not label people.
the Victorian government has put a lot of money in order to help us African people so that we can help our children. Let's hold on hands together to help the kids. So we do have, we run a lot of programs. I know I've taken time already. Um, so I've said about basketball, we have got cooking, we have got sewing, we have got uh, skin care, I've got a lady here. Can you wave your hand? Yeah. Uh, Judith is actually a skin specialist in beauty. She has been helping women who were isolated in the homes. Now they are just finding themselves doing good things. If you want to know more what Andra is doing and what Afrioz Care is doing, we have got four offices. You can find us in Dandeno. You can find us at Fountain Gate. Fountain Gate, we do community outreach. You know there was a lot of problems at Fountain Gate um, with our Islander children, African children, as community leaders, including Digon George and also my brother, um, brother Terry Yoa. We have been going there with other leaders, Mama Rose, walking in the shopping center and the crime has reduced. So please let's volunteer so that we can keep peace. I can go on and on, but my passion is to help youth and families so that we can live better. My life was written off, but I'm a living pro. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, on behalf of myself, and on behalf of the local community, I'd like to thank our community with the leader of the chairperson, Gore, and the former Stanley, for this opportunity to stand in front of you, to say thank you for everybody that came. It's really good to sit together like this as a South Sudanese. We lack this kind of gathering because every time when we meet as a Sudanese, the South Sudanese, in the funeral, most of our time we gather like this in the funeral. But today it's good. It's a good night. I say to Gore, you took a commitment to lead the Anyuak here in Victoria. And we thank uh, Sunday because Anyuak, when they started, as we know here, they're a very small group, but we say thank you, Lord. Now, they're growing. They become a very big number. We thank God for the work that Stanley has uh, been doing all these years. Lua community in Victoria, it's the same. We're going the same way as a Yuan. And I say Lua community again because there's some people here they still say, oh, who's Lua? And uh, other people also they are arguing that there's no Lua in South Sudan. Now I'm standing here. I say I'm from Lua. And everybody knows the name that called Yushol is not our name. Yushol is a name given to us. And we accepted that name for all these years. As we know, the time is coming, now we're independent, and we have to call our name with the way we 
everyone. Everybody got a nickname, but you have your true name. So please, we are Lua in South Sudan, in Wau, in Awil. Our, our land stems from Tunj, border with Bongo, border with Zande, in Equatoria, up to Awil, to Central Africa. This is where Lua stay in Sudan. And Lua extend, the Lua migrate from Sudan going to Kenya and going to other part. And Yuan is a part of us. We speak the same language. We speak the same language with Cholo. We speak the same language with uh, Bori. We speak the same language with Peri in the Equatorial. All this part of Lua. We are the whole Jopad movement. Which they stay in uh, Bahadur. Here in Victoria, we live, some of us in South East Suburb, and some in uh, Western Suburb. But more, many people here know us in, in Dajan of here, we are working with other communities. It's the uh, uh, community, with Deka community, Equatorial community, and uh, all the other South Sudanese community, we are working together. But because people, we are very small, some people don't see us, they just, they just include us with other communities. Uh, I will say thank you again for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to work with all other communities so that to lift our key. We came here as a Sudanese, but we lost our direction. We have to focus and focus on our team. It's not too late. It's not too late. The struggle still continues. We have to focus so that we can put a good future to our team. It's a big challenge. But as a South Sudanese, we know when we work on the hard time. We always love to work when it's hard. Now we, we, we've been relaxed because it's easy life here. But if it was hard, we went through the challenges of Kenya, Ken, Egypt, Oshin, and now we can, be, we can get away. We South Sudanese, we are very strong people. We have to believe in ourselves, we can make it. And I have no, a lot to say, but I thank you again for this opportunity, and I look forward to work with all other community. Uh, my name, George Mario, you know, and uh, if you need to contact me or something, I will be here. So uh, everyone is welcome so that we can work together as one people. Thank you. Uh, my name is Damon Guigur. I'm a Sudanese originally, Australian citizen. Uh, I would like to give a special thanks to Brother Staniel and a special thanks to Brother Gore for this special occasion. Honestly, I'm very proud to be here. And before I jump 
to say a few words, I will talk a little bit about Federation Association for Services Community. We are based here in Danok Hall. We do a lot of advocacy and we support a lot of young people too in system of correction. We go to God sometimes, face to face, and we go to the different occasions to support young people who are facing a lot of social issues. That is a very thing I will talk about it. And if you have a time, as a community leaders or individual or whoever, you are more than highly welcome and we are more than highly welcome to sit with you and listen for one another. Uh, let me go a little bit about community abandonment, which is I'm in charge. Community abandon is registered as a charitable organization. We do a purely clinical work. We look like a major register supporting people from African background on NDIS. We are working side by side with Melbourne University, in particular Disability Institute. So we're running a purely clinical works and the case management. So if you have a child with social issues or disability issues, sometimes it's hard to negotiate with NDIS to get the deal that the mainstream gets. So sometimes it's better for you to get a clinician to go with you and support you for advocacy, at least for the benefit of your child or anyone who is feel isolated. Let me talk about myself a little bit. Professional, I'm a counselor in male family violence sector. And I work with mainstream five days a week. And I will go to make a little bit comment about what Silver said before. The social issues in Australia is a major problem. And in particular, with new arrival, especially Sudanese, is higher. And if you go deeper for the entire coal community, it's higher. And this is where the family breakdown comes from. I visit one day a month, I go to visit and talk with a lot of young people. And many concerns is left without role model. When you don't have a role model in your family life, your life sometimes look like in the hell. Regardless if you believe it or not. We are the Sudanese community, in particular I myself, we grew up in the war. We were born in the war. And we are still in the war. And that issues is contribute because the community look like is struggling for unity. And sometimes I say it to a lot of people, the division among us not should be used as a witness. European Union, they divided British left two days ago. And I believe it's still called European Union and this never plus. So if you nail it in political perspective, it should not be used as a division or weakness for our people. We are still strong and we're going to pass those kind of issues. I know there are a minority here in Victoria, but because of the influence within others, communities and others, leaders, the Holy Food, I believe those people are not in Europe, but they came to support in Europe because they see the spirit of unity. And that is the key message we want to take it out at the South Sudanese community, leaders or tribe leaders or individual leaders or introduction. Our role is to support one another. If you manage to engage 15 people from your tribe or your sub-community, I came from Mok. Mok, we are minority among Denka. But if I manage to engage with 15 people or 20 people, I'll be proud for that. And that is the unity we requested. Sometimes I talk with people from the Greater Upper Nile, at the New York, Denka, Chuluk, Nyuak, Morle. We are, we, we are leaders of South Sudan in other way around. We believe it or not. And if there is a unity with the region of Greater Upper Nile, 
I believe the unity in the region of Greater Equatorial could be there, and the region of Greater Bangladesh could be there. So the unity should start from the house where you belong to. And that message will go to some community which they need to carry that kind of issues. So division, it could not be used as a weakness. We should learn through it and gain momentum and build the better future. So the use issues is the one of the big problems. And I know from my whole world, as the person sitting in the office professionally, how much resources the government puts into the system to support young people. And if you go to the Sudanese community, in particular, we are well educated more than Greek. And we are leading all kind of community in Victoria within unemployment. Believe it or not. So the issues is bigger than that. And I keep telling a lot of people who are holding the resources. If you manage to employ one South Sudanese community, regardless which tribe you come from, what color you look like, which language you speak, you manage to employ him, we appreciate that. So the issues is bigger than what we expected. So I'm not going to talk a lot. I guess I pass my message to the way that I think. And I will say thank you to all of you and thank you for this opportunity. And I was expecting Anywa to do more dancing because I never see Anywa dance. I used to see it in YouTube, which is Facebook, and it was not enough. So when I see the dancing here, it will look like even I was interested to wake up. But unfortunately, the music cut off and everybody went down. So please, <laughs> let's go back and try to carry the dance. At least we can go home with a group country in which I call it a part of healing in the community. And thank you very much and may God bless all of you. Um, so we'd just like to open up the dance floor to the community elders uh, to come in pairs um, and dance to two songs. So if you guys would just like to come down and step on the dance floor for two songs. Two song ladies, come and let it <laughs> Alright, um, DJ? Yeah. <laughs> 
let us pray and let us enjoy one another even though it's Sunday. You are present here, it means a lot to our new community. And uh, we need to work together with the new leadership. You know, we are church leaders. We are, you know, we are like Joker. Wherever we are, wherever your community is, you have to be there. So this is why we don't have any of this tribal identity. We are church leaders. We belong to Christ. And wherever you are, you are part of us. So we have to represent you wherever you are. It doesn't matter even if your community are divided. I will be with this today and I will be with the others tomorrow. Because this is our identity. So let us pray and uh, bless the food and also uh, we give thanks to those who work hard to prepare this food for us. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. God our Heavenly Father, thank you for this night. Uh, this is the day of the resurrection. We ask you to bless us and bless our new community, bless the new leadership. We ask also to bless this food, bless those who work hard for it, and also give those who are struggling with our food, especially our people back in South Sudan. Bless this night, let it be a joy for us, and also we ask your company and your guidance as we go back to our homes. We ask you also to protect us as we wake up for our work. And also we entrust this new year into your hand. Let it be a year of peace, a year of joy, and a year of happiness to our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord.